Hello, this is the talk on Windows AI, a hardware accelerated machine learning runtime for Windows devices. I'm Paul McDaniel, and presenting with me today is Clark Rarewick. Today, we're going to talk about Windows AI in two parts. First, we'll talk about inferencing with an overview of the platform and then an exciting look to some of the things we are ready for you to try out. Second, we'll introduce a brand new topic. Training. We're excited to tell you what we've been working hard on. What is the Windows AI platform? When we talk about the Windows AI platform, we're talking about a tightly integrated stack of technologies built into Windows 10. Each layer has a specific purpose, and together they give you the combined promise of easy to use, high performing, with a large scale hardware reach. Windows ML sits at the top of the stack. It's our API for integrating Onyx machine learning models easily into your applications. Below that is Direct ML. This layer provides an operator level API for finer control of scheduling and managing the lifetime of your resources and memory allocations. At the foundation of these layers is our compute driver model. This is the common abstraction layer across all of our different hardware devices and vendors. Now we want to show you what some of our customers have done with the product. First, here's Soji from Adobe. Adobe Sensei is our artificial intelligence and machine learning technology powering the creation and delivery of digital experiences to enhance the work of our customers through innovative and time-saving product features. An essential part of deploying these features is ensuring that they can run locally to give a broad range of users a performant experience. Windows ML gives us the ability to support the breadth of our Windows users for two of our key feature releases last year. These features are enhanced details in Lightroom and auto reframe in Premiere Pro. Enhanced Details uses Adobe Sensei technology to optimize images for maximum quality, as seen when we zoom into the image. And these next few video clips show our other feature, Auto Reframe, which uses Adobe Sensei technology to identify important objects and actions in a video and keep them in focus while automatically reframing those video clips to match desired aspect ratios. Across these features, WinML provided the following benefits, ultimately allowing us to ship. It provided a single abstraction for leveraging hardware vendor-specific optimizations. It provided the ability to create customized WinML builds that support a wide range of Windows versions. It also provided the ability to convert from TensorFlow and PyTorch training formats to WinML-compatible formats. In addition, the WinML team provided us personalized support for integrating WinML to our internal on-device machine learning infrastructure. The end result was a significant boost in performance, lower feature latency on CPU and especially on GPU. We are actively planning to use WinML for on-device machine learning feature releases on Windows for products like Photoshop, After Effects, and others. Thanks to our partnership with Microsoft, we have been able to deliver more concrete value to our customers and to accentuate the benefits that AI can provide within our solutions. We look forward to continuing our work with Microsoft along these lines. Thank you. And next, here's Peter from GE Healthcare to talk about how AI is changing how ultrasounds are used. Hello, everybody. I'm Peter Falkensammer. I'm the Global Product Manager for the Volusion Expert Series. We're here at the Manufacturing and Development Facility of the Women's Health Ultrasound Division of GE Healthcare. And this is our product, the Volosun E10. In ultrasound, we're talking about a very unique um, imaging modality compared to other medical imaging modalities, such as CT or MRI, because ultrasound is very highly user dependent. Now, what does it mean? It, oper it means that operating an ultrasound machine is highly dependent on the skills Of the, of the person using it. And there's two main aspects of this. One is operating the machine itself to adjust it for image quality and getting a good image that is adequate for making, it, making a diagnosis. The second aspect is to operate the probe, which is put on the patient's abdomen to find the correct view that needs to be seen 
so that the physician can come to a diagnosis. And in obstetric ultrasound, this is particularly challenging because of the variability that a fetus can have inside the mother's belly. Now, this is exactly where artificial intelligence comes into play. And in our most recent version of the Voloson Expert Series, we have integrated a function that we call SonoCNS. Now, this function helps the user to find dedicated standardized views of the fetal brain and also helps him to assess it, helps him to measure it for size, and with that, document a correct growth throughout the pregnancy. And this is how artificial intelligence in women's health ultrasound can support our customers to be more efficient in their daily practice. Hi, my name is Harald Deschinger. I'm a software architect for the Volosan ultrasound scanners developed in ZIPF in Austria. The Sonos CNS feature uses classification as well as segmentation networks to identify the correct planes and to place markers for measurements. It is important for us to have a framework for inference that offers performance, is independent of a specific GPU vendor and is supported over the lifetime of our devices. Minimal is a great choice in that aspect. As it is ultimately based on DirectX, it offers vendor-independent fast inference. And being part of the operating system, also in the long-term support channel, ensures us proper support over the lifetime of our products. Some work was needed to overcome incompatibilities and bugs when transitioning from previous frameworks. I would like to thank Microsoft for their support in the transitioning to WinML and the Onyx file format. WinML is the framework of choice for all our upcoming AI deployment on ultrasound scanners. Let's talk about what we've put into the most recent release of Windows ML, the Windows 10 May 2020 update. First, we've updated support for a newer version of Onyx. We now support version 1.4 with operator set 9 for both CPU and GPU. We continue to enjoy the rapid innovation and evolution happening in machine learning. We're committed to make our Windows platform not only capable of running the latest iterations of these new model architectures, but also the most accurate and the most performant platform for running them. Developer feedback from folks like you has been the best way for us to grow our platform. One example of this was your feedback about the importance of working set memory. These models can be big, not only for disk and download, but for working set memory of the application. New in the May 2020 update, we added a new session option, which gives you the ability to reuse the existing memory your learning model object had when making your new learning model session. That way, you don't have to have two copies of the model in memory, one for the model and one for the session. We've also refreshed our tooling to support the new Onyx version and offset. One of these tools, our WinML Runner tool, we added multiple new features to in order to use while testing your model. We even added a whole new set of metrics it returns. Performance is a topic dear to our heart. We're continuously investing to make existing model architectures faster and faster, and always have our eye on the horizon for new model architectures. With a large diversity of hardware, from our hardware vendors, form factors, and silicon capabilities, we know it's super important that all of your customers benefit and have a great experience. So with the May 2020 release, we've made additional optimizations in our engine. We've improved operator implementations, tuned our shaders, and graph optimizations. We've achieved some significant performance gains. To demonstrate this with data in our charts here, you can see a list of eight of some of the model architectures we regularly monitor. The GPU numbers on the left show models running on a discrete GPU and compares the speed of the November 2019 release to our new May 2020 release. For example, Tiny Yolo V2, we see a 20% improvement. ShuffleNet, we see an 80% improvement. All relative to the same model running on the same GPU on the previous version of Windows. Similarly, on the right-hand side, 
we have the same set of models running on a CPU. One of the powers of the Windows ML stack is that you can run on the GPU or the CPU. You can see that we spend a huge amount of time also optimizing these CPU code paths. In that way, your models will run as fast as possible, no matter what hardware ends up being on that Windows PC. Let's talk about feedback again. One of the largest pieces of feedback we heard from you was that you needed this platform to run everywhere that your apps did. We call this reach. To make this process easier, we want to enable you to use the Windows AI platform, regardless of which version of Windows happens to be installed on your customer's PC. And so what do I mean by that? We released the first version of Windows ML with Windows 10 version 1809. For this slide, we're going to use the actual version numbers Windows has, not the marketing names. Fun fact, the versioning number scheme Windows has uses a year-year, month-month, four-digit number that loosely matches the month it was released. So with each following update, we continue to update Windows ML. However, there are some customers today who utilize our long-term servicing releases and other previous versions of Windows 10. Some, all the way down to Windows 8.1. And so it's important to be able to support these customers. To address this, in addition to shipping the inbox component, we're also taking our current Windows ML stack and packaging it up as a NuGet package. Developers can ship this as part of their application all the way down to Windows 8.1. Going forward, you'll continue to see the inbox component updated with new features and support just like we always have. The exciting new part is that for each of these new releases, we'll offer a matching NuGet package that you can use for all of the older supported versions of Windows. Let's talk some more about this NuGet package. First, it's available right now. We're making official builds that we published in NuGet. Some of you that were watching what we've been up to might have noticed that we actually published an early preview of this back in March. These official builds will install and run on all versions of Windows, all the way down to 8.1. However, at runtime, you can query their level of device support. Windows ML offers full CPU support down to Windows 8.1 and full GPU support down to Windows 10 version 17.09. We'll continue to publish and update both sets of binaries, the NuGet package binaries for use on any version of Windows, and the Inbox System 32 binaries that are automatically included with each new version of Windows. Let's talk about some of the key differences between these options and how to best choose which option is right for you. First, availability. The Inbox binaries appeared starting with Windows 10 version 1809. If your customers are all running this version or later, your best option is to simply use the binaries already built into Windows. If your customers are running older versions of Windows, your only option is to go with the NuGet binaries. In terms of distribution, the inbox binaries are distributed with no extra work inside Windows. For NuGet binaries, your installer will package and distribute this as part of your application. You install the binaries into the same folder as your app. One note on size. The set of binaries are about 20 meg. If distribution size becomes a factor, you're going to want to use the binaries already distributed inbox with Windows. For servicing, Windows already has a mechanism for fixing critical bugs and issues. With Windows Update Servicing, PCs will automatically get all of these fixes for inbox Windows ML. For NuGet binaries, we'll offer the same fixes that we made to the inbox binaries. You, as an application developer, are responsible for getting these new updates from NuGet and then publishing them to your customers. You're also responsible for final testing and validation. For inbox binaries, we use our existing app compatibility testing and our Windows Insider population. For the NuGet binaries, you'd leverage your existing application testing. Forward compatibility is a word we use here to mean that with each new release, your app will get new features and new performance wins without having to make any changes. When your customer upgrades their Windows PC, your app just gets better. With NuGet binaries, you still get to take advantage of the wins, but you have to do a little bit of work to update and then republish your app. 
either to use the new NuGet binaries or switch over and start using the new inbox binaries we just released. Some of our customers have chosen to go with the best of both worlds approach, where if the version of Windows your customer has installed supports the level you need, use that. If the version of Windows your customer has installed either doesn't have WinML or doesn't have the features you need, fall back to use the NuGet binary. Next, let's walk you through a demo of how to use some of this new stuff. First, let's head over to our trusty GitHub Windows ML samples repo. This is your go-to for getting great tips and tricks on how to use the API. Let's go down to samples, squeeze net object detection, and choose CPP desktop. I'm choosing to show you the desktop sample because from feedback, most of you are using WinML as a desktop native app. Okay, here we got the Windows, uh, the main CPP file. Let's kick off a build. Okay, you can see everything succeeded. Now, let's debug it. I'm going to step over a bunch of this and head down to load from file path. This will be the first time WinML will get called and load our model. Let's jump out here and show you that there's no WinML loaded in memory yet. Now, step over the load model call. Boom. There you can see Windows.ai machine learning just got loaded in memory. Let's go ahead and let this finish running now. You can see we got a 93% prediction rate that my picture was a tabby cat. Sure enough, it's a tabby cat. Now, let's go add the new WinML NuGet package. I'm going to go to the solution and then the package manager. We're going to choose our Microsoft.ai.machine learning NuGet package. I'm going to add it to our C project. Then go through here, make sure all of our settings look good. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and press install, confirm we're okay with it, and then boom, it's installing. Could it be just that easy? Well, almost. Okay, next we're going to go back to our project. We're going to kick off a build again. This will make things easier since the build step will tell our CPP WinRT toolkit to go parse all those new headers from the package we just added. Awesome, success. Now we need to make two code changes to the project. That's right, two code changes. It really is just that easy. So first we're gonna include the new header file that we just generated. I'm gonna also add this control flag here so that we can switch back and forth between inbox and the NuGet package. So now I have my if def and my new header file. Let's go change our using statements. So I'm gonna take this Windows AI machine learning namespace and allow it to switch over to our Microsoft AI machine learning namespace using our control flag. This one change will then take all the rest of my code and switch it to the NuGet package. Since we have the exact same sets of objects and interfaces in both namespaces, you literally don't have to change the rest of your app. You can use the namespaces to control targeting. Do you want to use the System32 binaries? Or do you want to use the NuGet binaries? Now, let's go rebuild this. First, I'm going to add the control flag to tell the build we want to use the NuGet binaries. Like that, and then good. I got the control flag. Awesome. Then I'm going to do a build. And success. OK, now let's run it. So step, 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 back to that load model method. Notice again, scroll down a little, nothing loaded in memory. Now, let's step over. OK, now we go take a look and see how Windows ML loaded in memory. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, boom. We instead see that the new NuGet binary got loaded, Microsoft.ai.MachineLearning.dll. Perfect. Let's go ahead and let this finish. You see 93% tabby cap, good old tabby cap. It really is just that easy.
Microsoft offers a broad set of products across our ecosystem. Core to our ML inferencing technology is the Onyx runtime. With the Onyx runtime, developers get an inference engine with highly optimized CPU performance. Designed to work in a cross-platform neutral way, including support for Windows, Linux, and others. For hardware acceleration, the Onyx runtime has a model where you can add execution providers to get access to specific hardware, depending on which platform you're on. For example, if you're looking to run on an NVIDIA GPU, you could add the CUDA EP or the OpenVINO EP to run on an Intel GPU. And while that's great if you're writing an application and deploying to a known targeted device, it can be difficult to scale for the diverse device ecosystem our Windows customers have. When we introduced Windows AI, we took that same performant Onyx Runtime CPU inference engine embedded inside of Windows ML. We then built a set of Windows-friendly APIs that allow you to seamlessly interact with other Windows components and currencies, like camera stacks and media pipelines. For hardware acceleration, we leverage DirectML and the compute driver model to give you high performance across all Windows devices. And all of this packaged up and shipped as part of the Windows operating system, like we talked about. Both of these solutions have been available for a little while now. We understand the developer landscape can be extremely complex. And we want to enable developers using the cross-platform Onyx runtime, the ability to leverage direct ML. We also wanted to make it more straightforward for developers to understand how WinML and the Onyx runtime are complementary to each other. So we decided to take a new approach when we introduced our NuGet package. Starting with the Onyx runtime, we have a common set of highly optimized CPU kernels. On top of that, we layered our Windows ML API. We did another thing worth mentioning. We open sourced the entire Windows ML source code. That's right. The entire component is now open source today. When it comes to the APIs, you can now see how they all come together to provide a holistic offering. One set of APIs is optimized for the Windows runtime, and one optimized to be cross-platform and platform neutral. We then added a brand new DirectML execution provider. Through DirectML and the compute driver stack, regardless of the API select, you'll get the same hardware agnostic acceleration that scales across all Windows devices. How these layers appear as binaries in the NuGet package are Windows ML. It's built into the new Microsoft AI machine learning you saw earlier in the demo. It no longer contains an embedded Onyx runtime. Two, there's the Onyx runtime and the Onyx runtime in a new file, the Onyx runtime DLL. This version includes the Windows AI NuGet package it's got DirectML's EP embedded inside of it. Note, the way execution providers work is they include the code the Onyx runtime needs to connect to the device provider, but it does not include the actual provider for either CUDA or DirectML. So it takes us to our final binary, directml.dll. This is the actual platform code that we know is DirectML. It's built on top of D3D, and the compute driver that's built into Windows. All three of these binaries are included in our new release for you to distribute along with your applications. Now that was a whirlwind tour of all our inferencing stuff. I'm gonna hand over to Clark now to tell you about training. Thanks, Paul. As Paul mentioned, we focused on the exciting investments we're making, ensuring a great inferencing experience when using Windows ML and Direct ML. However, as the Windows AI platform team, we understand that's only part of an AI developer's workflow. And that's why I'm excited to talk about the investments our team is making to ensure your training workflows are hardware accelerated too. As a team, we've been thinking about the right way to make investments on this part of the AI workflow. And we focused our efforts on two key audiences. Professionals, along with students and beginners. We'll talk in more detail about each of these audiences 
and how we're thinking about our investments throughout the rest of this presentation. Let's start by talking a bit more about professionals. Think of these folks as your data scientists or ML engineers that are developing and training machine learning models day in and day out. As we talked with these folks, there were a few key takeaways regarding their local workflows that helped us with framing our investments. The first is when professionals are using their local machines, they're focused on inner loop development. This covers things like experimenting with training scripts on a small set of data before pushing to a hosted environment for full-scale training with their more promising findings. Plus, when they're conducting this inner loop development, they have an existing set of tools and libraries that are already a part of their day-to-day. -day. And the vast majority are running these on Linux. We also found many leverage the GPU acceleration enabled through NVIDIA's CUDA to accelerate their model training in frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow. Building on these key takeaways, we wanted to meet these professionals where they're at today and think about how to make an ideal experience on Windows. And as we thought about that, we landed on enabling three key parts of this workflow. The first is ensuring CUDA exposure is in place to support the existing tools, frameworks, and libraries professionals are already using in their day-to-day. -day. Plus, provide the NVIDIA Container Toolkit and CUDA developer tools that professionals expect when running these workflows. And tying it all together by making sure the Windows subsystem for Linux can support these workflows out of the box. And an essential piece in making that experience seamless is taking advantage of the Windows host GPU to provide the hardware acceleration. The most exciting part in talking about all of this is we've made enough progress that I can show you a common workflow in action. So let's dive into a demo showing off CUDA exposure inside WSL that will release as a public preview through the Windows Insider program this June. Here, I have my daily driver desktop machine that I brought home with me from work. On this machine, I've done a bit of preparation for this demo. I set up a WSL instance with Ubuntu and updated my GPU driver so CUDA is accessible inside WSL. Inside of Ubuntu, I installed Docker, NVIDIA Docker, and their dependencies. And I've also kicked off Docker D so I can jump right in to launching a Docker container. First, I'll run this Docker command, which launches a container with the TensorFlow GPU package into a bash prompt and routes my training and inferencing scripts for object detection into the container for me to use. Boom, there we go, we have TensorFlow. I'll install a couple of additional Python requirements that aren't in the base container. It'll take just a moment to install those, finishing up this install, and I'm ready to start training. Next, I'll kick off the training script for my object detection model. I'm using an epoch of one and a batch size of eight, as I'm not going to run the entire training loop. While the training script is doing the necessary setup, I'll open Task Manager in order to show the GPU. Let me go ahead and pull that up. I'll switch to the Performance tab, and then I'll switch the view to show the CUDA engine on my GPU. There we go. And in a moment, the training script will kick off. There it goes, we're training. In Task Manager, you'll see the GPU activity increases as this package of TensorFlow uses CUDA for hardware acceleration. Each printed line in the WSL window represents a completed training step that's using images in our training data to calculate the weights and output 
the loss computed during each step. Now, normally, you'd let the model train until it converged based on some metric of your choosing. However, for the sake of the demo, and as I mentioned, I'm not going to let this run in its entirety, and I'll stop the training script. Now, I'll kick off an inferencing script using a model that was trained earlier and show you inference running in the setup too. I'll pass in only the first 100 frames of the video so I can show you the generated output in real time. It'll take another moment for the necessary Python imports to complete, as well as load the previously trained weights. And now, while the script is running, it's applying bounding boxes and labels to detected objects in each frame based on the model. And if you look back at Task Manager, you'll see the inferencing workload happening inside TensorFlow hitting the GPU. And there we go. The inference on the video is finished. Let me bring the process video into the frame and start to clip over. Pretty cool, right? Let me move back a bit in the video and show you the detection of people who just got off the chairlift as well as the skis in the bottom of the frame. Fun fact, this video is from one of the developers on the Windows AI platform team that really enjoys skiing. At any rate, the coolest part is the entire workflow was happening inside WSL and leveraging the Windows host GPU. Let's jump back into the presentation and talk more about the students and beginners audience. These are university students focusing on machine learning or artificial intelligence, or in-industry software engineers ramping up their understanding of machine learning in an online course through Coursera or LinkedIn Learning to meet new expectations at work. In talking with this audience about the way they learn, it helped us frame some additional investments. The first is these students and beginners are focused on building the foundation for their new skills and are generally working on training common model architectures. In building these skills, they're using Linux to do their machine learning focused work and want to use Windows for their productivity and personal tasks. Last, across all these learning workflows, we found this audience utilizes a variety of hardware configurations, specifically covering the breadth of GPU vendors. And so, like our approach with professionals, we thought about the ideal experience on Windows for these students and beginners, resulting in a couple areas we want to focus our work. Starting with providing hardware accelerated training support on any DirectX 12 GPU, along with integrating this hardware acceleration into the popular machine learning tools, frameworks, and libraries used by students and beginners. That's why I'm pumped to showcase the initial investments we're making to turn this ideal into reality. We're taking DirectML, which is already powering over a billion AI decisions through Windows ML every day, and expanding it to hardware accelerate training workflows too. On that note, let's dive in and demo DirectML running training workflows, which will also enter public preview this year. As in my previous demo, I set up a WSL instance with Ubuntu and updated the driver for my GPU so it's accessible inside WSL. Except this time, I'm using a Surface Laptop 3 representing something a student or beginner would use. I've also set up a virtual Python environment inside Ubuntu with my needed dependencies and installed a preview package of TensorFlow with a DirectML backend that exposes our training investments. Finally, I've done a bit of data preparation as I'm going to start with training SqueezeNet. I'll go ahead and kick off the training script to get this demo going. While the training script starts with the necessary Python imports, like in the previous demo, I'll pull up Task Manager to show the GPU. There we go. Now, 
The initial step in the training script has started, and the activity is picking up on the Radeon Vega 9 GPU that's in this system. And in a moment, we'll be off to the races. Let's, oh, there we go. Again, like the previous demo, each line printed in WSL represents the completion of a training step. In this case, the number that's shown is a calculation of the accuracy for that step's iteration of the model. Now, also for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and stop the training script since earlier I fully trained the model so I could show off inferencing too. I'll pull up the Python command that calls the inferencing script, passes in the previous trained version of the model, sets the tensor layout format, and uses a folder of test images that are all ships for running inference on. I'll go ahead and kick that script off. As the Python imports start and finish up, along with loading the necessary bits into memory, we'll hopefully see the model's inference predictions on these images primarily result in ship printed as the top result. Oh, there go the first couple hundred, mostly resulting in ships as the prediction. There go the next several hundred. Yeah, mostly ships. And there we go. All 1,000 images inferred on with the model. The best part is all that inferencing leveraged the performance optimizations we've built into DirectML over the past couple of years. Now, let me switch to my third and final demo for the session. This time, I'm running on a Surface Laptop 2, and I'm going to show you the DirectML backend for TensorFlow running on native Windows. Here, I have the same virtual Python environment from the previous demo setup on native Windows. And I'm going to run the same SqueezeNet training script that I did in the last demo. I'll pull up Task Manager again to show the GPU activity while the training script is running. There we go, GPU's up. There went the initial step in the training script. And with that, we have TensorFlow training a model on native Windows and leveraging the hardware acceleration of the Intel GPU that's in this system through DirectML. We're excited to expand DirectML's capabilities in support of training, along with bringing these investments to native Windows and the Windows subsystem for Linux. And there we go. We're off to the races yet again. So awesome, right? The greatest part is that everything you've seen today, you'll be able to try yourself when the public preview launches through the Windows Insider program. And with that in mind, let's talk more specifically about what will be supported in June. Those of you that will leverage the CUDA path can expect CUDA support inside the Windows subsystem for Linux for your existing ML tools, frameworks, and libraries, including PyTorch and TensorFlow. Plus, you'll have all the Docker and NVIDIA container toolkit support you expect when working in a native Linux environment. And those of you ready for the direct ML training enhancements, we're enabling support on native Windows and inside WSL. Plus, you'll be able to use your existing hardware that has a DirectX 12 capable GPU. And this will all work through the preview package of TensorFlow we're releasing that contains a DirectML backend, providing the hardware acceleration for your training workflows. You'll be able to get started with the TensorFlow tutorial models as we use those in our initial validation of the preview. And we're excited to continue investing and add new functionality to DirectML over time, making the preview package and your training workflows even better. Now, to give you a more complete picture of what's coming, let's talk about what the setup steps will look like for the public preview. As a starting point, you'll need your machine running the OS from the fast channel of the Windows Insider program. Then, to ensure you can use your command line based Linux tools, you'll enable WSL2. Next, you'll install a preview driver from your GPU hardware vendor 
to expose the Windows host GPU inside your WSL environment. Then, if you're setting up the CUDA path, you'll follow the normal workflows as you would on native Linux and install your training framework of choice and start training. Setting up the DirectML path, it's as simple as pip installing the TensorFlow DirectML preview package. And then you can get started learning about training with the TensorFlow tutorials. We're looking forward to hearing feedback from all of you as you start running your own training workflows during the public preview. Wrapping things up, I'll give a brief recap of everything Paul and I talked about. Starting today, the developers out there can pick up all the inferencing investments Paul discussed at the following links. The various packages will make sure you can provide a hardware accelerated inferencing experience regardless of the hardware configuration your customers have. And coming in June, the investments we're making to accelerate the training workflows of professionals, students, and beginners will enter public preview. Look for updates and share your thoughts at the following links. And as always, if you have questions or feedback, send them to AskWindowsAI at Microsoft.com. On behalf of myself, Paul, and the entire Windows AI platform team, thanks for watching. And we're super excited to see what you build next, leveraging the power of hardware acceleration across the entire AI workflow from training to inference.